Mm -hmm. It's a pleasure. Thank you very much for the invitation, everybody. It's, I'm very glad to see familiar faces. It feels like coming home, second home here now. <laughs> I spent two years recently here in, in Malaysia, I think, in Sasanaraka. Two full years of training, and really I'm very happy for many reasons. One monk came in, another one came out. I'm, I'm totally certain about it. And I thank you very much for all the support and how you take care of the Sangha and the Sasana. It's really exemplary. And I will try to reproduce what you are doing here in, in my home country. So without further ado, should, would you be up to taking a journey tonight? Would you like to take a journey? Would you like to take a journey? Yes, yeah. yes that sounds good. OK, so yeah, we will take a journey. It will go far. Eh? So please put on your safety, spiritual safety belts. You know, it will get maybe a little bit rocky, but uh, we have some spiritual turbulences. But don't worry, I, I have the map where we are going and we will end elegantly. That I can assure you. But yeah, we, we, we will shake it a little bit. Will you be up to for it? <laughs> OK, OK. So let's start our journey. We are here in the planet Earth and suddenly shoo, we go up. We start going up and up and up and our perspective starts to broaden. We have nothing to do with the world. Finish. Work and family, everything is out there. Please give to yourself this space, this moment, just for you to contemplate and to grow. I will do the same. So we are up. We are having big perspective. What it, what it once seems very big, now it looks very small. And then should we go further? A little bit further? Here we go. Further, further, further. And suddenly we can see our spaceship. The place that where we born, the place where we have lived all our lives, and the place that we will say goodbye finally one day. So this is our home. We are brothers and sisters. Nobody can jump from it. So we are floating in space. And I would like to remind you that, and please remember it every day. We born floating. We have lived floating. And we will die floating. Everything that has, is happening right now, even it looks very solid, this building and the buildings outside and the streets and the mountain, everything, we have been floating all this time. Do you need more magic? It's amazing. We have been floating and we forget so easily. We get so worldly, so early, so soon. So this is our home and still we are floating around a huge ball of fire. <laughs> <laughs> and this ball of fire is just only one of billions and billions and billions of one galaxy. And this galaxy is one of billions. Imagine, just feel around us how big this is. So I will ask you one question. What is our size in comparison to the galaxy? What is your size? I mean, it's insignificant. It's smaller than a microbe, isn't it? What is our size? In, in comparison to the sun, in comparison to the planet, is minute, isn't it? Very, very small. So next question. <laughs> if we are so small as we are, what is the size, the real size of your problems? <laughs> that sounds good, isn't it? Now, the question is, why do they seem so big, so huge? I don't know why. We are constantly thinking about it, obsessively. We wake up thinking about my problems. We, during the day, thinking about my problems. Before going to sleep, thinking about my problems. <laughs> Why? It's time, my dear family, that we start getting the grip of the mind, gently, firmly, but gently, and start putting the mind in perspective. My dear, it is not so important, really. From now, what we think of our problems are now, from now in 100 years, forget it. No one will remember. We will not certainly remember. <laughs> so everything is going to pass. So I will invite you to breathe in and breathe out. And you will do like this when you do it. Cup hey. Fu hey. A, big, a, big, a bigger ha. Cup hey. Fu hey. No, no, that's too small, too small. A little bit bigger. Now we get the perspective. We know this, the real size of our problems. Cap hey. Fu hey. Ah, that's a good one. Yes. We are recording. Seriously, right now we are recording a new path in our brain. Instead of thinking of our problems and again getting tight and aversive, now we are bringing a good 
Ah, it's okay. It's just nature. Ganula, no problem. Everything is fine. It's just nature. No, no, no need to, to worry about. So this is the first reminder I want to bring to you. This, this talk, as you may have heard, it will be filled with tips. How, what kind of tricks I use when, since when I was a, a, a lay person, married, I was married for 20 years with a, with a lady, with a, my ex-wife from Macau. So I lived here in Asia for 15 years or so. So I was married for 20 years. I had a company and a job. I was a musician and concerts and trips and etc. family. So many of the tricks that you will hear today were the most, the useful ones. Some I tried and didn't work. I got the ones that really work. And this is what I want to share because I understand what kind of life you're having. Having a family, having a job, it is possible to do, but we need to hack our lives. We need to hack our minds and start bringing the Dhamma inside. Otherwise, the world, as we know, will eat us. At some time it does. Do you agree? Do you agree that sometimes it... So we will get, get a, if you have a pen and, pen and, and, and paper, get it. Or because there will be many tips, or you can use your phone, but no texting, huh? only note. If I see some texting, <laughs> eh? the bad monk will come up. <laughs> ah, no. Okay, so first reminder, I will invite you, please don't be uh, distracted. The people will come in or so, you, you stay here, né? because it also uh, will help me to be. So first thing that I would suggest, find a picture like this one on internet, just put galaxy on Google and you will get one, please print a small one and put it in your fridge. Or another place is very good, put it in the mirror of your toilet. And you say, well, really? Yes, a place where you visit very often, or you can put it in the background of your computer. So every day you will remember, wow, I am floating. Reality is greater than what I think. I am very small and my problems also are very small. So please remember this, keep an image, very simple thing to do, put it there and just remember. So let's breathe in with the galaxy in mind. Breathe out. <sighs> the size of our problems is not really big. We are not so important. We breathe in and we breathe out. <sighs> we will try our best and move forward. So let's go. This is perspective. And I will invite you also to continue curious. The moment we say, I know, that moment we just killed our mind. Nothing else to do. It's, I call, when we say, I know, it, I call it intellectual suicide. <laughs> no more, no more growth there. So keep curious as a child. And if you wish to, it's, I mean, some of you might get some creams, not to look, to look more younger, no? for the skin not to get wrinkled, I think. Oh, I have a better method. Just keep curious as a child. And it, that will keep us fresh inside and outside, really, truly younger. Let's keep curious about the wonders of the world and of the universe and keep the perspective big. Okay, here we come to a good one. Ready, I said, safety belts. Ne? We got now perspective where we are in the universe. We know our size, but now we will get perspective in where we are in life. This is the path that we go, the, the journey of life. Imagine this, this, this is the journey of life. And we are somewhere, somewhere we are, either at the beginning. No, I don't see babies here. No one is at the beginning. Either in the middle, either in three quarters, or maybe closer to the end. I don't know, who knows? But a very good way to know is like very easy. What I heard from one teacher, everything in nature has cycles. The year has cycles, spring, summer, autumn, and winter, isn't it? So our life, also has cycles. So if our life has spring, summer, autumn, and winter, if we live 80 years, like uh, average, isn't it? 80 years. So we just put 20 years for each season. So from zero to 20, spring. From 21 to 40, autumn. From, uh, from 41 to 60, uh, I'm sorry, summer, it was summer. So uh, second is summer. Then the third one from 41 to 60 is autumn. And then from 61 to 80 is winter. Where are you? Hey, you know already where you are. So we need to adapt ourselves. In my case, I'm already almost in the middle of autumn. Eh? Almost in the middle of autumn. So the question is, if I am in the middle of autumn and some of, okay, raise your hand. Who is in autumn already? Who is in, in summer? Raise your hand. 
Only one summer, what, two summer, three summers. Who is in, in uh, four, four here. Who is in autumn? <laughs> Who is in winter? Okay, now we know. So, we are already in summer, even summer, or the end of summer. The question is, if I'm already in autumn, let me think, I'm already in autumn or in winter, do I have time to waste? That is, if I die at 18, eh? but we can die before, that, that's no problem. <laughs> easy, easy, easy. So no problem, we breathe in and breathe out. Just nature, no problem, but do I have time to waste? No, I don't think so. Any of us have to waste time to waste. Next question, do you waste time? <laughs> Why? So this is a very good question to keep. We know, oh yes, but I don't have time to waste. Do you waste time? <laughs> of course we waste, oh me too, I also waste a lot of time. So we need to start getting the perspective and reclaim all that. Otherwise, we will, uh, welcome, welcome. We will really uh, miss a great opportunity we have. We have a home, we have family, we have food, we have clothing, we have more than enough. Isn't it? Isn't it? We have way more than enough. Will we, it will be a crime to waste this opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Wasting time, we cannot afford. Next thing, many of you, because I did also, I'm sure, you thought, oh, when I retire, then I will practice the Dhamma. Who can assure you that you will retire? <laughs> Maybe we go before. And if we wait when we retire already, the body is not so flexible as it was before, and the mind is not so flexible. It's a little bit too late. So that is why I designed this talk. We cannot waste time, first of all, and we cannot wait to be retired. So how can we do to manage to be able to practice really in our, li in our daily life? Okay, so good thing that we have the Dhamma for us. There are many tools. We will explore many tools, even coming from the words of the Buddha today. And I want to make the next reminder for everybody. My dear family, please pay attention here. It's just movement. The Dhamma is not out there. The Dhamma is not in the monastery or in the altar or in the Buddha Rupa. The Dhamma is you. The Dhamma is me. The Buddha described the mind and the body. Which mind and body? This one. He's talking about this body. He's talking about this mind and how to train and purify this mind. Not out there in the books. I'm not, I, I thought we totally need the books, but we need to, whatever we understand from the Dhamma, I will encourage you, and this will be the next tip, is from what I heard from the teacher, from the monk, or what I read in the Sutta, what does this mean here, here, in this mind, in this heart? Please make that question. What does this theory mean here? The Buddha definitely was talking about us humans. Nama and Rupa. The nature of our body, the nature of our mind, and what the mind does with this. And how can we purify it? So, next reminder, write it there. The, the, the talk is being recorded, so also if you don't want to write and just focus, leave it there. Later on, I think in YouTube, you can access it and pause as many times as you need. Yes, today there will be uh, many information, but don't worry. It, it, is, it is a list of things to do. So remember this one. Next one. Let's move on. So as when we are in a journey, I think we all need to have moments where we pause the journey. And like this lady here, she starts putting the compass and, okay, where am I going to check? Where am I going? Where, 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 am I going in the direction that I set up? 10 years ago, am I still in the right direction? Am I honoring, am I honoring my, the priorities of life? Or am I just doing something I don't know why? There is one phrase that I, I heard from a teacher and I was, oh, very painful, <laughs> very painful. Somebody came and asked to the teacher and says, teacher, what do you think society is doing? And then he said, they are searching for something they never lost. I heard it when I was a lay person and it really hurt because I saw myself searching for something that I never lost. Are we in that position? We need to be very careful. 
Because society, when you look outside, it looks like that. Everybody running, 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 rushing, rushing. Where are you going? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> so let's be careful, come back, come back to the body, come back to the mind. And we need these moments to stop. So it will be very good to take a retreat, even if you are busy with family or job, try at least the cheapest. I will get, tell you to sell it the cheapest. The cheapest price I can give is once a year. Ne? <laughs> but ideally, two times, even in your own home, turn off your phone, tell your family, you see, I will be by myself quietly this weekend. Or if you have a friend who has a home somewhere else that is empty, go there for one weekend without the phone. And then just stay and take yourself retreat. That is the minimum, I would say, that you can have. And if you can go monastery or retreat center, wonderful. So we need this. And in terms of Dhamma practice, stopping is when we meditate. It's also a good time to come back to ourselves, come back to the body, come back to the mind, and just stay there quietly. Silence is medicine. Is the medicine of the mind. Just silence. Come back to the body, come back to the mind. And once the mind is stable, now we check the compass. Am I going in the right direction? So this is the way we can do the stop in our journey of life. And we need to do it often. Often we need to stop. Does it sound logical? Sounds logical? Yes. Oh no, sounds logical. Yes. Yeah, that sounds much better. Yes, sounds logical. Okay, so let's continue. One, uh, maybe you have heard this one, Anna, but I love it. Eh? Seattle Tajania, when I was in Burma, I think 2004, the first time I heard it, I was in ropes temporarily that time, and I am there with, I just, the ropes for the first time, or oh, like this day, and then I am with him, and then one time he said, okay, I will make you one question, I will make you now the question. I will say two scenarios and you will tell me in which scenario is easier to develop peace. Ne? You will tell me, okay, the first scenario, retreat center in the middle of the forest. The weather is perfect. You just took breakfast. Your teacher gave instructions. You can only hear the birds and the sound of the stream, the Buddha Rupa, the smell of incense and the candles. You are sitting there. Everything is perfect and quiet. First scenario, ne? tell me, can you get peace there? Yeah, possible. Second scenario, the middle of KL, 3 p.m., very hot, humid, your air conditioning doesn't work, and people is stuck in traffic. Like this. Second scenario, where, in which, in which of all of these two is easier to get peace? On the, on the left or on the left for you, no? On the left or on the right? In the left is easier to get more peaceful, is way more peaceful to get over there, isn't it? Now the next question is the following. In which one you need peace the most? <laughs> Obviously in this one. So are we practicing correctly? Are we using the Dhamma correctly? We're only wanting to go there and spend peace in a place which is the easiest to do. I mean, nobody's talking to us. <laughs> Noble silent. Everybody's, oh, good morning, my brother. Oh, good morning, my sister. Oh, choo -choo -choo. oh choo -choo 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 -choo. Very easy to be peaceful. But Sayota Janiya also said, for real problems, real wisdom. So this is what we need to do, my dear family. This is definitely where we will need the most of peace, or otherwise we will look like this gentleman. <laughs> and here is where we will really, truly need it. Are we being skillful to do that? Are we doing it really? Ooh, I need to make some adjustments. How can we do so? Okay, let's move forward and see, start getting onto some tools. And I want to mention something before we move on. Okay, this is our mind. This is the, the uh, potential of our mind, the spectrum of our mind. So when we are angry, our mind, our mind falls to the bottom of it. We are angry, we are, we are maybe thinking bad, bad words or something or like this. And then as we move out of anger, then the mind gets a little bit more into the wholesome, neutral somewhere here. And then we are happy and then we are maybe grateful, generous or even wise. And we come to the, we move on from the Akusala to the Kusala side, to the wholesome side. And then this is, our mind is moving somewhere here. Our mind is somewhere in this spectrum, 
the mind is always somewhere. So either here, I don't think, let me see. No, no, everybody looks quite happy. So and I think none of us is here. Fortunately, we are somewhere here, here. And then if we wish to bring the frequency of our mind higher, more stronger, more refined, we move forward. When we start meditating, our mind is not, is not only in Kusala, but now it's stable in Kusala. It's free from the hindrances, and now we are here. And then if we continue, then the jhana somewhere here, and the mind continue getting refined, strong, refined light, and suddenly he's on the edge, we are on the edge. And at one moment, one more breath, and pok, suddenly the mind goes beyond the world. That's it. We touch Nibbana for the first time. The mind got so refined, so far from Akusala, it came here, and suddenly it goes to unworldly, Lokuttara, beyond the world. Enlightenment has happened. The question that I will do to you now is, who is responsible for where the mind is? Either here, either here, or either there. Who is responsible? Am I responsible for your mind? Obviously not. Are you responsible for the mind of your children? No? Your wife and husband? No. Everybody is responsible for their own mind and either skillful or unskillful, we are either here or here or here. So my dear family, this is very important. We are responsible of what kind of mental state we are entertaining. The question is, where do you keep your mind? <laughs> Let's pause for a little bit. Where do I normally keep the mind? Think. There, here, here, you can choose. It's our responsibility. Where? So knowing this, now we know our responsibility. And as you can see, we can know, if we are only searching for sense pleasures, kama wachara, we are only wanting to hear beautiful, see beautiful, taste, tasty, feel pleasant, and think nice things. If we are only thinking about that, which very often we are, <laughs> we are not in the very high, but we are in the here. Then when we start meditating and then jhanas and everything, we can move away. We know what to do. When we are doing bad, he's here. And when we are being generous, kind, grateful, or wise, yes, our mind is moving forward. So knowing this, how can we do this now? In our daily life, the Buddha gave a very simple, the whole of the Dhamma, and you know this one. Saba papasa akaranang kusalasa upasampadasa chitta pariyodapanang etam budanang sastanam. The Buddha says just three things we need to keep in mind. Very simple. Avoid doing bad. First, don't do bad. Second, do good. So you come out from depth. You come out from red numbers and now from zero. We go to gain. Do good and purify the mind. That's it. That's all what we need to do. All the suttas boil down to this one, isn't it? So after we, we have this one, now the question is, how are we going to do this during our life? Simple thing to do when we're brushing our teeth, when we are cooking, when we are eating or working. How can I avoid doing bad, do good, and purify the mind? This is why this talk was designed for. So now, without further ado, now that was the introductory information.